Cousins, minus 225 to go to Atlanta. The Vikings are plus 150 after the Vikings had been a minus 225 favorite. While Fields, who was once as high as minus 475 to be a Falcon, is now plus 110. Is this news that Kirk could be going to Atlanta? This is the Lombardi line with former NFL executive Michael Lombardi. Now here is your host, Stormy Bonatoni on v the sports betting network. News or noise, and we are going to start talking quarterbacks in this year's upcoming NFL draft. During an appearance on the Pat McAfee show, Adam Schefter said, it certainly sounds like we could get up to six quarterbacks taken in the first round. And to double down on that thought process, former Jets GM and current ESPN analyst Mike Tannenbaum said he could see six QBs in the first half of the first round. Six in the top 16. Boy, do we love this time of year. News or noise, Michael? No, I think this is news, right? I think this is news. I think everybody, you know, is, needs a quarterback. Everybody's going to try to make it so that it fits to what they want to do. I think it is news. I think that, you know, when you talk to people around the league, J.J. McCarthy has a lot of support. You know, Michael Penix Jr., I think everybody's going to wait for the medical to come back on that. But I do think this is news. I think there is a strong feeling that the quarterbacks are going to go. It's different. There isn't somebody like in years where you can't believe this guy's a first rounder, Kenny Pickett. You know, I think that was really more of an act of desperation by the Steelers. Remember, for me, everything in the first round is that this guy is a starter. That when you draft somebody in the first round, you're saying to your fan base, this guy will be a starter, right? You're drafting in the top five, you're saying this guy will be a top five player at his position. That's what you're hoping for. So I think a lot of these teams are looking at these quarterbacks and saying, hey, look, we think this guy can be a starter. And based on what's played in the National Uh Football League, I'm not sure you can disagree with it. I just feel like six of those guys being first round picks feels like a lot. I'm like, set the betting market at five and a half. Set it at five and a half. Please let me take the under. I would feel pretty comfortable take in the that. Under? I would. I would. Although, then we have another thought- report from Diana Rossini of The Athletic who said, one smart GM told her there's a very real possibility QBs could even go one, two, three, four, and that the Cardinals would trade out of the four spot. So, uh, there's still a lot of, it's talking I, season I still for that. a while. Well, yeah, but I mean, there's a couple teams like, so let's, let's take the Raiders, right? Where are they going if they don't get a quarterback? Okay, if they sign Russell, we'll know what they're doing, but... Say you don't, right? Say you don't. What about Minnesota if they lose Cousins? So there's a lot of things that are going to start clicking here in the next couple days. Well, because you mentioned Kirk Cousins, Pro Football Talk's Mike Florio says Cousins is seriously considering moving his family to Atlanta. He didn't delve into the specifics of his report, but did say he has it has very credible indications. And so a lot of people saying that he's looking for a house out there in Atlanta. So whether this is noise or, or, or not, Michael, this has had an impact on the betting odds. New team odds for Cousins and Justin Fields. Cousins, minus 225 to go to Atlanta. The Vikings are plus 150 after the Vikings had been a minus 225 favorite. While Fields, who was once as high as minus 475 to be a Falcon, is now plus 110. Is this news that Kirk could be going to Atlanta? I think it is news. I, I think it's news in two cents that Atlanta clearly sees they need a veteran quarterback. They can't take a chance on a guy like Fields because they could be in the same spot with Fields they were with Ritter. And they need to get something done. And because they have Zach Robinson, who's from the Shanahan school, kind of it fits what Cousins wants to do. They can program. He can have the success. Atlanta's got some skill players, although not as great as everybody thinks they are but they've got good skill. Bijan Robinson probably being the best skill player on their team who they just drafted. So yeah, this makes sense. This is news. Now, remember a lot of this, hey, he's looking for a house here. He's looking for a house here. You know, it, Minnesota, unless there's this huge gap, I, I think he stays with the Vikings. Mm-hmm. I really do because he's comfortable there, you know? But one thing we've known about Cousins is, you know, he is, for all the things we want to talk about, he is going to take the very last dollar he can take. He's There's no discount with Cousins. Yep. And, and to that point, if he does stay with Minnesota, the price right now, like I mentioned, plus money. We're plus 150 now for Kirk to return to the Minnesota Vikings. A lot's going to come down contractually to you imagine those guarantees because he wants it fully guaranteed and the Vikings don't want to do it, especially considering he's coming off that Achilles injury. Let's stick with the theme of quarterbacks here. Dak Prescott in the final year of his four-year $160 million 
dollar contract with 59 and a half million in the cap hit this year, plus a no trade, plus a no tag clause. This has led, though, to a lot of discussion about his extension, maybe give Dallas some more cap relief this season, especially given Jerry Jones has previously had comments about going all in this year. Prescott said he's, quote, definitely confident a new deal will get done. But reports are the two sides, Michael, are pretty far apart on this. And even Jones said in a nutshell that they don't need to. News or noise on Dak's contract? Oh, I think this is news. I do. I think this is news. Jerry, Jerry's not going to get held a gun to his head. See, they're trying to use the $59 million to, to, to say, Jerry, we'll give you cap relief as if he's, they're going to be doing you a favor. Nobody does you a favor to give you cap relief, it's especially if you give them a ton of money and then they want future years moving forward. It's kind of a way they've manipulated the media. It's no cap relief. It's, ca- it's, it's cap relief, but it's not cash relief. When Jerry said he's going all in, Jerry was talking about he wants to sign Prescott, but he's going to sign Pittman, and he, excuse me, he's going to sign Lamb, and he's going to sign uh, Parsons. So those two guys are coming first before I think he gets to Dak. I don't think he's going to give Dak the money until he pays. He knows he's got Parsons, and he knows he's got his Lamb. Then we'll deal with Dak. And I think he's content with li- living with that 59 number. Now, it's going to affect their team. But I think this is news. I think both sides are positioning themselves with their stance. And if I were Jerry, I'd want to get my guys done. I want Parsons and Lamb done before I have to go back to Dak. So if and when would you think this would get done? Like, would it be before the season starts here? You think that he'll still get on board from that standpoint? Or is it like Mike McCarthy and just play out the end of your deal and we'll see what happens? Well, I think they could threaten them that way, certainly. But I think that'll get done in April. It'll get done before camp when they need the cap room to kind of put all their team together. Right now, they can kind of, right now, remember, Stormy, there's, you only count 51 players on your cap. Okay, so when it gets really hairy is Labor Day weekend when you got to count everybody. And so that's when you have to really make, and you have to prepare for injuries and, you know, IR and all those things. So he's got some time. And I think the one thing is, it, you look bad as a leader. If you go to Dak and do him first, Parsons is going to be like, wait a minute, he's already been at the well once. Now you're going back to him and not me? You know, or you don't go to Lamb. Wait a minute, Dak's gotten paid. He's paid really well. Like, there's no sense of urgency. I I think Miami is in such a rush to sign to it. It blows my mind. It blows my mind. You know, but they're fully vested in them, so they're going to do it. But I think it affects the rest of their team. Yeah, you talk about the franchise tag with Wilkins earlier because they're trying to build up some money so that they can pay Tua. And I knew as soon as I saw that, my first reaction was Michael would say, why? Why? What are we doing? Uh, Another team that has a lot of what are we doing questions is the New York football Giants. And we said as soon as they paid Daniel Jones, they would have buyer's remorse. Rich Eisen said coming out of the combine this week, he heard those exact words. Buyer's remorse are the way apparently the Giants feel about this Daniel Jones contract. And they are done with the quarterback, although they still might have to play him this year coming off the ACL injury. News or noise? Well, I, 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 I'm having a hard time buying this one. Now, look, Rich Eisen doesn't deal in n- rumors and speculation. He's not like our boy over in Israel, Dove, who do, we don't even know who the hell he is, right? <laughs> He's not a regurgitator, right? So we don't know. We, we know he, he, you know, somebody told him this, that he trusts, and somebody in the know. Rich isn't a rumor guy. So, you know, but I have a hard time believing that John Mara, Chris Mara, the, Maca- the Mara family, are, are, are on board with this. They love the kid. In fact, you heard you heard Eli Manning come out and say he expects him to have a great year. Everybody that's tight with the Mar- Maros say that. I think it, this could be coming from coaches because coaches like me who watch the tape say it ain't going to work. Yeah. It hasn't worked. It's not going to work. He's never averaged over 7.1 yards per attempt. It's not going to happen. So I, I believe there's part of this that's news. But I have a hard time thinking that John Mara, who loves this kid, is going to divorce himself from him. Michael, um, one thing that Rich Eisen did do on his show this week, and he's done it multiple years coming out of the Combine, was rank the top five rumors that he heard coming out of the Combine. One of them you'll absolutely love. That should Kirk Cousins move on from the Minnesota Vikings, that potentially Trey Lance could be the solution there. What? Wow. Wow. Of course. 
Wouldn't that be? Ma- I mean, he's from Minneapolis. It makes Go sense. Go back home, yeah. It's like this. Oh my God! You know, the Bears are going to get a first round pick for Justin Fields. You keep waiting on that. I've got that down in my rumor sheet. Trust me, I added more stuff to my rumor sheet this I morning. It. I love it. Just write it down on the legal pad. Add it to the list. Lying season, ladies and gentlemen. 